From our first introduction to the Wanderer back in Chapter 2 and his identity revealed to the X-Men now lurking around the island and Fortnite's second Marvel season arriving, Fortnite Season 3 has gotten insane. Grab some snacks and popcorn because today we're here to reveal the entire story and this season it began with an iconic character who defeated Zeus and rescued Peely who can now rest and watch the sunset on a grateful universe. And this, of course, is Jonesy. Approaches NPC and to your face, he'll say that he's more of the strong and silent type. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is. Everyone remembers The Visitor, who was heavily involved in Fortnite's storyline. We originally had him introduced and known for his mysterious personality, leaving everyone scratching their heads as to who he might be. During Chapter 3, he was preparing the rockets for their launch, but he would announce that he was retiring. And just a few months later, Donald Mustard, the creative director of Fortnite himself, retired, so the similarity between Donald Mustard and Fortnite's Visitor character were uncanny. This seems entirely unrelated, but if you talk to the visitor during that season, his description denoted that he was the strong and silent type. This is the exact same thing he's saying now, which has led to many fans revisiting the old theory of Jonesy slowly becoming the visitor with a bit of time travel involved like we saw in the Big Bang event, and it may actually be more than simply a theory this time. That doesn't even scratch the surface as there's another neat little detail. Jones also does the card drop emote, and the card he throws down will actually stay in place. This typically resembles an individual's banner icon, and for Jones, Epic actually made it so it's the Underground's logo, the faction which he was a part of in Season 1. While it was disbanded by Hope, it means that we'll be seeing them a lot more in this season's storyline. After they were sidelined last season, they've returned in this one with voice lines too. Their main goal this time around is to stop Megalodon's pipeline from reaching his ship and to take on the Wasteland Warrior factions. Hope reveals she considers herself responsible for her sister's actions that call back to Valeria unleashing Pandora's box back in Season 1. After defeating the Society and the Gods of Olympus, her and Jones have one more enemy to to defeat, and to do so, they need to find the very thing that started this. Rewinding a bit, in Fortnite Season 3, Megalodon arrived to the island, and from the opening trailer, we can deduce how he was created. You see, no one seems to remember, but in this cinematic, you can almost see him toss the silhouette of a character to the side. This character that he throws is none other than the Chaos Agent, who's a mad scientist who lives primarily on the Chapter 2 island and in Slurpee Swamp. In this scene, Megalodon may seem to be in a position of power in the shark ship, but really, he's not. Because a lot of people have drawn connections between the new Nitro and other sub substances on the island like slab juice, but most importantly, slurp. If we go back in time to the Chaos Agent's appearance in other Fortnite trailers, you can spot him in a similar environment. Specifically, the Slurp Legends short trailer where he's jumping in celebration in the background after successfully infusing characters with Slurp. Amidst that same time frame, another outfit was released. This was Big Chuggis, who from the Chaos Rising loading screen we can spot in another one of Chaos Agent's monitors. That means it was one of his experiments, and if you take a close look at Megalodon and Big Chuggis side by side though, you'll realize that these two look almost identical to one another, and both were created by none other than the Chaos Agent. That's why we see the Chaos Agent being thrown to the side in the opening cinematic. The only difference between Chaos Agent and Big Chuggis is that their alternate snapshots, one infused with Slurp and the other with Nitro to save their lives. But it looks like the Nitro overloaded Megalodon to the point of him becoming even stronger than his own creator, which is why we see the Chaos Agent being choked out in the trailer. This is a reality in which instead of doing Slurp experiments, Chaos Agent has done Nitro once, and now he pays the price. People have drawn similarities between Chapter 2 and 5, arguing that the maps are shaping up to take the exact same shape. But something the chapter 5 map is only different than the chapter 2 map because of us messing up the timeline during season OG. But let's consider if this chapter isn't just a remake of chapter 2, but rather if the characters had sailed here from chapter 2. And we have an idea of just how. Just last season, Midas and his entire crew came to the map on the yacht, presumably from somewhere off in the ocean. And it's suspected from just over these mountains. This theory gets crazier though, because back in chapter 2, the skyline looks very familiar. And this mountain in particular from day 1 in chapter 2 was there from start to finish. Look at the skyline at the chapter 5 map today and you'll see this exact same mountain which seems identical and you could be thinking, Aid, this is just a reused asset. But it's inverted. When it arrived in chapter 5, the boat was pointed towards this mountain in particular that Midas and his crew left on and because you can see the same mountain in this chapter as there was in chapter 2, what if the only thing separating chapter 2 and chapter 5 is this mountain in particular? This is an insane theory that even lines up with the roadmap leak, so to get to Fortnite chapter 2 OG, we can assume the only thing separating us is this very mountain. But first, some background because this season's storyline begun all the way back during last season. 
If you headed over to the scrying pools to complete your season story quest, the very first dialogue with the oracle would reveal the theme of season 3. The prophecy given by the oracle revealed darkened skies and choking dust would overtake the island, and they did. The giant sandstorm made the sky completely dark, and choking dust covered the map in the form of sand. So the quest literally predicted the future in the season 2 build-up event, which is something that we should keep in mind moving forward. The season 2 build-up event, though, left us with more questions than answers, since they created a massive mystery which is the focus of this season. Zeus's statue overcharged Pandora's box, which let out a large beam that traveled to the ocean to become the sandstorm. Some players managed to get into replay of the event, and it looks like during its final sequence, the box sunk into the depths of the river Styx and now is nowhere to be found. But the news tab seems to hint at the fact that finding the box will be one of our main objectives this season, and Hope has overtaken a house at Sandy Steps which is filled with cool references and given us a look at what will be happening soon. Inside of her room are two important artifacts. One is the book Valeria studied in season 1 of the chapter to learn more about Pandora's box in the first place, and the second is the gem holder, an object very similar to the box itself. Itself, which might be used to locate where the box went after it sunk, since it looks like a compass. In the prophecy, it's also stated hope will be lost and found again. This is referencing the box, which has already been opened once, and it may be opened a second time when it's found in this season for hope to truly remain. With the box closing, the gods have made their own escape in season 3, except for some who hint at even more arrivals. With Zeus's defeat, he was overthrown by Jones and Hope, taking over his throne at Mount Olympus. Defeated and with no immortality, he left alongside the rest of the gods except for Artemis and Cerberus. NPC dialogue reveals Cerberus was left left behind by Hades to guard Grimgate and prepare for the arrival of the Underworld's Queen Persephone, who is coming to the island for her summer vacation, who we'll see shortly. Artemis, on the other hand, has remained at Mount Olympus as she believes the wasteland brings a nice change of pace to the island and is growing fond of mortals. This brings us to the Wanderer, whose first sighting was in Chapter 2, but we'll get to that later. Unleashed by the Box is something that's been hidden in plain sight ever since this season's launch. The Oracle ominously warned us of a character named the Wanderer, who will soon draw near. At first, they were nowhere to be found until players spotted a spray in various locations depicting a mysterious cloaked character. Not only that, but inside of the battle pass loading screen, you can see the very same cloaked character riding in a car in the background, and it looks like there's a very cryptic approach as to who they are littered with question marks. That, however, hasn't stopped players from theorizing, and there's a theory that's perfectly lined up with the future of Fortnite as we know it. Next season's set to be themed after Marvel once again, which we already know thanks to the leaked roadmap, and storyline experts have pointed out incredible similarities between the Wanderer and Marvel's very own Doctor Doom. It's not too far-fetched if you think about it. About it. And supporting this theory is that season 4 is going to be based off of a Fantastic Four comic in which Doctor Doom is the big antagonist. And let's not forget that he just so happens to be a personal favorite of Charlie Wren, who's the new creative chief officer at Epic Games, who's responsible for making the story. While none of it's confirmed, it's certainly too much for it to be a coincidence, and we can only wait and find out more about who the Wanderer is and where they currently are. One thing that's for sure is Doctor Doom's coming, and how exactly is something we'll touch on later. Alongside the Wanderer arriving in the Wasteland is Megalodon and his crew called the Wasteland Warriors who have their own plans for the island, even hinting at a possible live event. Megalodon's our newest enemy this season, as he and his crew came up in the sandstorm and decided to take over the entire map. The nitro-infused villain, though, has created lots of suspicions around him because he's also very similar to Gunner, which has led people to thinking they're even the same person, and with Gunner's fists in Chapter 3 Season 2's trailer matching with the nitro fists, it makes perfect sense. The last we saw of Gunner was with Doctor Doom, yes, the Marvel supervillain eliminating him during the collision event. This was revealed in the Zero War comics, so people have thought that there could be a connection between the two characters. What if Gunner had died and been on life support to the point of where the Nitro is now the only thing keeping him alive, hence why he couldn't even take the mask off. A mask that, by the way, resembles Gunner's original mask from Chapter 3. Gunner or Megalo's plans for the island simply aren't enough for him to conquer it, though. He might have come across an indestructible pipeline extending from Redline Rig trying to reach the brutal beachhead POI. This pipeline will keep extending throughout Season 3 until it reaches the Leviathan ship. Megalo wants to ravage the entire island with his ship, but reaching the island wasted all of the ship's nitro fuel. So, once the pipeline reaches it, the ship will be ready to move once again. It makes sense why the Redline Rig houses so much nitro, and it involves the return of an old storyline character. The Machinist is one who is not only named, but also invented by Nitro. Navigating through the rig, you can find a board with some very interesting reveals. It explains the original names for Nitro were Fast Juice and then Speed Goo. While not important at first glance, it explains why Chaos Agent was also held captive by the Wasteland Warriors at the beginning of the season's trailer. It's undeniable that he was used to create Nitro because of his goo-like powers and his background as a mad scientists like he was involved in Slurpee Swamp's creation. If there's anything to conclude, it's that we can see more of Chaos Agent in the near future, but this could just be a small easter egg. Another interesting easter egg though lies on top of the snowy mountains. A new secret bunker was added, and when players went nearby, you could hear very creepy banging sounds, confirming someone or something is trying to get out. Look closely though, and players had noticed claw marks around the bunker. We weren't sure yet what they could be, but it did end up opening, revealing secrets inside which we'll come to later in the video. But first, we have to look at another secret 
appropriate map change that was added in the first major update of season 3 with the return of Rift Beacons, which everyone thought meant the return of Tony Stark, but this likely isn't the case for a reason that went over everyone's heads. Scattered in all corners of the map with the new update are these red Rift Beacons used to teleport in new POIs, and the last time we saw a similar model was in Chapter 2, Season 4. The story goes, they all face towards Frenzy Farm on the Chapter 2 island, bringing the giant upstate New York biome with Stark Industries on it, which was one of the most popular POIs of all time, and alongside it, other small POIs were there in the form of landmarks. Many thought it was shaping up to look like Season 4 will be filled with tons of map changes, but these won't be Marvel. Places like Stark Industries, an Avengers Tower POI, or even a location dedicated to Magneto and other Marvel villains were hoped for, but this just isn't possible. This is because if you compare the old Rift Beacon to the new one, you'll see while yes, they have similar shaping and coloring, the old ones read Stark Industries on them in very small print, signifying that yes, these were built by none other than Iron Man and related to Marvel. But take a look at one of the new ones, and this logo is entirely absent. So while we could be seeing something teleported in, like the iconic X Mansion, Avengers Tower, or even Baxter Building, the home to the Fantastic Four, it's more likely that this will be something to do with Fortnite's story. This is just one of the theories regarding the Rift Beacons, as some speculate they'll also be used to find something under the map that the community's been waiting for, and we'll have to get to that soon. And using the clues around these new beacons, we can spot that they also have telescopes around them, which leads us to another character we know was obsessed with telescopes, Valeria, the sister of Hope. She might be the one behind this after all, considering she's responsible for the Pandora's box opening in the first place, leading to all of this expanding mess. The Rift Beacons could be being used to summon back Pandora's box, which makes sense in how they could malfunction, leading us to next season, Marvel. When it first appeared on the island, the box had a glowing orb showcasing different star constellations that ended up being teasers for Greek god outfits that would be a part of the battle pass. If you head over to Sandy Steps now, where Hope's taken over a house as her base of operations, you can find a secret room which has the gem holder. We all know this is linked to the box, and in new quests, Hope instructs us to go find the missing Pandora's box gems in the wasteland. In this week, one of the gems has already been placed, with three more missing, but the leaked image of the gems reveals that there's six. While the meaning behind most of these constellations currently is unknown, one in particular has caught some eagle-eyed players' attention, because it's a massive teaser to Chapter 2 returning. Taking a closer look to the constellation, you'll notice that it looks oddly familiar, and that's because it's part of the ghost logo Midas's faction. We know he left the map on his yacht in search of a better place for his ambitions, so this might mean that we're going to be meeting him again very soon. This alone could give us a hint towards these other constellations mean teasing future updates. It's obvious the sword one is a reference to the Pirates of the Caribbean, the crown probably one to fall guys, and the current one in game definitely looks a lot like Magneto's helmet. In any of these cases, it's certain these gems are going to be crucial to finding Pandora's box again, which we may see happen in this season's live event. There's four gems, and since one's already been added, we can assume the rest will be added in the next three updates, which brings us to the Wanderer. Because now, weeks into season three, Fortnite's gone super creepy with characters literally being stalked by an unknown ghost-like figure who could be a reference to some of the game's oldest legends. Let me explain. This season's quests have a side story of figuring out who or what is the character called the Wanderer. We all know this began at the start of the season where multiple sprays of an unknown hooded figure could be found in different POIs and they could even be spotted in this battle pass loading screen. Since then, things have escalated in new quests because there's some NPCs around the map and you can ask them if everything's normal and it seems there's weird activity going on to some of their answers. Many characters are terrified after the report being watched by a hooded figure lurking in the darkness, but they vanish once they turn to get a good look. This is building up to what we were warned about in season two, a power stronger than even the gods of Olympus. And this mystery figure is going to be revealed very shortly. No matter whether this turns out to be Dr. Doom's fans theorize or even something entirely new, it's cool to see Fortnite getting a bit creepy again, considering Save the World was initially meant to be a horror game. This is reminiscent of fan theories about Slenderman and Wailing Woods or the clowns that tilted watching you, so this could be a neat reference to those times. More will be revealed as the questline expands. What has been referenced is one of the most iconic additions in the history of Fortnite storyline that has brought us countless events in the past. And of course, I'm talking about the Zero Point, which was last seen in Season OG and never mentioned since. That was up until we got some new voice lines by Jones himself in the new update, who was behind the extraction of the Zero Point in OG and the Big Bang event itself. The big question everyone was asking is if the Zero Point still exists on the current map, and if so, where is it? And we might have an answer. Jones explains that during the Big Bang event, he got lost inside the Zero Point, as you can hear here. When I got lost in the Zero Point, I, I got all the way lost, so just leave it alone. Which lines up with us seeing him appear in the live event for a brief moment after the Zero Point's explosion. The reason he reveals that is because Hope is eager to find the Pandora's box, because she feels like she wants it to be found, and in the wrong hands power like that, that could have devastating results. And we're 
worst case, it falls into the wrong hands. The box wants to be found. I can feel it. Jones, on the other hand, has had his experience with the IO exploiting the zero point. So just like the seven once believed, he claims that the power like that is better off if it's left untouched. This might mean that the zero point does exist somewhere on the map right now, potentially under the central lake, and is left alone for now. With next season being Marvel, it won't be too far-fetched to think some villains will want to exploit the zero point's power like we've seen Galactus do, so as the season progresses, we may get to know more about where the zero point's been all this time, and what'll be happening once both it and Pandora's box two powerful objects appear on the same island. This is where things took a turn for the worse, because stalking players on the map lurking in the shadows now is none other than the Wanderer. But before we get there, please like and subscribe because things are about to get crazy. His very own model has been famously added to the game at this point into the season, and now he's already begun stalking people in-game. You can find him in one of these six locations on the map where he'll be spawning randomly each match. Here you can see this mysterious shroud of darkness surrounding what we know as the Wanderer, but what's even crazier is that his appearance on the island alone can distort the reality around him, hinting at the fact that whoever he is, is a powerful entity. There's dozens of other theories on who this could be, and someone took one of Fortnite's very own characters, the Foundation, to see if he fits into the cloak found in the files, and he slips in almost perfectly. This makes a lot of sense, because this isn't really to see if the Foundation is the Wanderer, but rather someone else really important who has a similar build to Fortnite's biggest antagonist yet. You see, we first saw the Wanderer in a loading screen, and looking back, it clearly dons a face. A face which doesn't match the facial appearance of the foundation and wouldn't fit with the helmet. This means it's more likely that the Wanderer is Geno. The theory is that the current storyline is actually connected all the way back to chapter 4 season 1 where we met none other than the Rift Warden Stellan telling us that there would be a shapeless man who might be the Wanderer. When I was young, the shapeless man came to me. The Shapeless Man was heavily hinted to be Geno, especially since he was said to have imagined a world of perfect order, hinting at Geno's imagined order faction. But Stellan's descriptions seem to match the Wanderer perfectly, a being without shape watching us with dark purpose. Additionally, the Wanderer's cape is made of leather and has a similar pattern design to that of Geno's cloak and armor, so a lot of the community believe the Shapeless Man, aka Geno, is this new mysterious cloaked figure and he's returning soon. The theory also suggests that if Geno really is the Wanderer, he could have actually been in side of Pandora's box all along. Let's not forget the Odyssey, the female counterpart to Geno's snapshot, the Ageless, was related to the Olympian gods. Not only that, but some storyline experts caught something that's further proof to this theory. The last we saw of Geno was him rebuilding himself atom by atom in the Zero War comics. You'll notice that this panel's background is orange with some stars appearing, and if that looks familiar to you, it's because it perfectly lines up with the constellation orb of Pandora's box. Maybe how he rebuilt himself has to do with the effect around him, which is something we'll touch on later. The end of Fortnite X Marvel Zero War also foreshadowed that this wasn't the actual end of the story, implying Jenna would one day inevitably return. With next season being themed around Marvel, there's tons of rumors that this is going to be a continuation of the Zero War story that was unfinished for ages. If that occurs, there's no better way to introduce Jenna in game, and it would line up perfectly with everything happening on the map now. And if Jenna does return, we can only assume we're going to see the return of the Imagined Order, a faction that after recent hints is likely to be returning soon. If you played in chapter 1 or 2, you'll have noticed that there were bunkers all around the map that were used by the Imagined Order as bases of operations. All of a sudden, bunkers have started appearing in other Fortnite modes like Fortnite Reload and LEGO. In the new mode, an aisle bunker can be found at a small cave near Tilted, and for those who have explored a lot in LEGO Fortnite, LEGO versions of these bunkers are super common. This means after their defeat, a lot of the Order's members likely fled to other worlds like LEGOs or the Island of Reload and are waiting for instructions once their leader returns. Speaking of bunkers, there's a subplot this season that was secretly building up to the continuation of the Zero War storyline as it revolves around a bunker and the Snow Mountains. We know Wolverine had a protagonistic role in the Zero War comics, and he even was able to face Geno himself. He was in an intimate relationship with the Imagined, a member of the Seven, and daughter of Geno, who sacrificed herself to defeat her father for once and for all. This was something that left Wolverine in pain, and now it looks like he's back thirsty for revenge. Inside the bunker lies the Weapon X Lab, a place where mankind enhanced Wolverine's mutant abilities. He got a new outfit too, and the shop background has a teaser, showing pages from Zero War featuring Wolverine and the Imagined. So, Wolverine might actually be the one leading us in the war against Geno and the Wanderer next season in order to execute his revenge. Freeing Wolverine from his prison was of course none other than this season's bonus battle pass skin Magneto who has a crucial role this season because thanks to him, we may know where the Zero Point is. Yes, contrary to popular belief, the Zero Point does in fact still exist because it was first confirmed by Jones when he first mentioned it in dialogue and now was confirmed in Magneto's quests. The rift beacons that were placed all around the island are not here to bring Marvel's world to the island, but rather to locate the Zero Point. This 
This could only mean Magneto's looking for it, and we can only assume that towards the end of the season it'll be found, leading to more of Marvel's villains attempting to use the Zero Point's power like Galactus or Doctor Doom. However, theories around the Zero Point go even deeper with some thinking the Wanderer is actually a human version of the Zero Point itself. It sounds ridiculous, but if you look at the evidence, it makes a lot of sense, and it begins in Chapter 2 Season 5 where the Zero Point was destabilizing and so it emitted these really strange reality distorting waves. Does it sound familiar? Well, it's the exact same effect the Wanderer has when appearing in game so this entity could just be the zero point in disguise if that isn't the case we know beneath the island there's a titan who unleashed pandora's box after his hand emerged on the island and has been dormant ever since we got his outfit a while ago and looking in his chest you can see the zero point this leads many to believe that this foreshadows the end of chapter 5 meaning the titan will awake once again and since the zero points in his heart he could destroy the entire island in a live event and we know there's one big one planned towards the end of the year thanks to the leaked roadmap if it's not the titan destroying the chapter 5 map though there's a big chance that it's actually one of Fortnite's most well-known factions, The Last Reality, who could also be returning. This is because a large portion of the players don't believe the Wanderer's Geno, but rather is the character called The Nothing. The Nothing's The Last Reality's overlord, worshipped by the Cube Queen and other members of the Villainous Faction. It was first introduced in the Chrome Season, after it sent the Herald to destroy the Chapter 3 map, and if you completed Byte's quest during that season, you would learn more about The Nothing and how it's a hive mind entity with its only goal being to destroy the Zero Point and with it every reality so nothing would literally remain. This, of course, ties back to Chapter 4 Season 1 once again, but this time some disagree with the previous theory of the Shapeless Man being Geno and think it's the Nothing since it fits the description of a dark being watching from the shadows much better, which is also exactly what the Wanderer is. In that case, it's possible the Nothing instructed Rift Ward and Selen to build the Rift Gate as soon as possible to free itself from where it was held in Pandora's box. With it freed and finally on the island in a physical form, it could set its grand plan to finally bring the entire last reality back to the island where we could even see the long-awaited corrupted versions of the Seven that were all talked about in chapter 4 return and begin the search to destroy the zero point for once and for all, ending all of reality. Before that happens, there's only one person who could prevent the Wanderer's plans from taking shape, and that's Hope, who in the latest quest makes some shocking reveals about herself and her powers. After she asks us to get Pandora's gems left behind by the box before it vanishes, she reveals that they're extremely powerful to the point where she feels a strange connection. Something about being around these gems, it makes me feel, I don't know nauseous but in a good way that strange connections led her to having visions of the future that she doesn't want to discuss with the jones because she believes we're close to a good ending this just isn't further from the truth because as the prophecy from season two revealed there soon will be a war with the wanderer and hope will be lost yet found again hinting at her development an entire season back to succeed these plans, Hope will first have to face Megalodon, who has his own fair share of secret voice lines in game, revealing a lot about the Wander. Available now only in specific languages are secret Megalodon transmissions that you could hear while in a car. He tells us not to bother the Wander if we see him on the island because he has an important matter that he has to resolve, and they're currently allies which share a common goal, which we can assume is gathering the gems scattered on the wasteland. He tells us not to touch or talk to the Wander, and especially not to try to look at what's under the cloak because it's beyond comprehension. Whether this hints at the Wanderer being the Nothing or Geno, it confirms that he'll be a powerful threat and the only way to find out who he truly is will be to wait until the Beware the Wanderer challenge is released a few days before Season 4. Now that he's officially roaming the island though, we need to talk about how the Wanderer actually first appeared in the story years ago. Yes, during the Zero Crisis event back in Chapter 2 Season 6, there's a split second in it where a reality distorting wave sweeps over the camera. Look around and you'll notice the game turns into reality. Everything's quality is enhanced, but also three characters are added. Each each of these are praising the zero point, but look close at the one dressed in a white cloak and you'll find what players are speculating to be the Wanderer three years before his initial release this season. But to explain this and how the Wanderer even ended up here in the first place, we have to look back all the way to his origins. Before this, the first time the Wanderer was explicitly mentioned in game was in chapter 5, season 1. This began with the build up to Pandora's box and on early concept art for the box, you can spot a cloaked figure. This is the Wanderer, a picture is worth a thousand words and looking at this art from the box, it tells an entire story. 
story. The panel on the left reveals the gods in peace in the heavens above and then displays the wanderer followed by some swooshing lines. These are symbolistic of a transition and the next panel on Pandora's box shows what we can assume to be a character coming to life. This is the titan being generated and brought to life summoned by the peace below him. This is a scarab and it's an artifact inspired not by Greek but Egyptian myth. This will be very important later in the video because it hints at a possible war between mythologies but we'll touch on this soon. Scarabs are known to be used to resurrect and it's assumed that the wanderer activated the scarab to summon a titan bringing a new set of titans of the island to the fourth and final panel. But also in Greek mythology there was a war between the Olympians and the titans after the latter ones abused their power. This battle shook the world and ended with the titans being banished to the underworld. What's even crazier is that there's hidden details on the map that show this already happened in the fortnite island as well. All over the map last season you might remember in Olympus and the underworld bombs there's giant weapons and signs of damage in buildings that tell a story from another era. It's clear that the battle of the gods and titans took place sometime before season 2 began and after both were unreleased from Pandora's box. You may ask how is the wanderer connected to all of this? We can assume he's the one that used the scarab to resurrect the titans and cause this war which could imply the wanderer is someone entirely different from what we initially thought possibly making him a being from another mythology being Egyptian. We know there's Greek gods in the Fortnite universe meaning it's also possible there's other mythologies existing especially Egyptian ones evident by many skins in the skin surveys and concept art of the scarab. This has massive implications because it could result in a season dedicated to battle between mythologies. We know Pandora's box is the focus of chapter 5 and we haven't seen the last of the Olympians yet. So if they discover the wanderer, a possible god from Egyptian mythology has also been unleashed from where he was imprisoned, it could result in an all out war between Greek and Egyptian gods. We still haven't seen all the Greek mythology skins released in game and there's a lot of ancient Egypt inspired skins as well in the survey so perhaps Epic is saving those for an upcoming season and if you ask me the possibility of a season just like this sounds super cool. Assisting this theory of the wanderer being some kind of celestial being is a new leak found just recently that reveals a new version of his cloak inside the game files. He was supposed to have a galaxy texture within his inner cloak but from the looks of it it's not used in the final version. It could however hint at one of the other most speculated theories in the community right now which is that the hooded figure's connection with the zero point. If the wanderer truly was the cloaked character seen praising the zero point in chapter 2 season 6's trailer it leaves everyone questioning how we got here in the first place or maybe even how we went back to this moment. Time travel just isn't new to the Fortnite storyline because we've seen many characters use it especially during season OG with the time machine. The zero point itself plays a key role to time travel as well since it exists across all time and we've seen how it can mess up time around it with a prime example being season X when it returned Dusty Divot to the time it was about to be hit by the meteor. Therefore some consider it possible that the Wanderer is also just a time traveler using the zero point to jump through timelines. The zero point's connection to the Wanderer is undeniable because when he's walking around you can see a reality distortion effect around him following wherever he goes. You'll know that this is the same effect used for the zero point in chapter 2 season 5 which would be around the same time that the cloaked figure can be seen praising the zero point. This doesn't only mean that the storyline's been planned all along but the Wanderer praising the zero point in some sort of ritual might have been what gave him his reality distortion aura and maybe even his time traveling abilities if true. There's two other characters spotted with him though, one wearing an all black cloak and the other who we can't quite make out so there could be more mysterious characters infused with this zero point aura too which could be arriving later. Which takes us to the wanderer's motive, what he truly seeks on the island and what his purpose is. According to some of Megalodon's voice lines, the wanderer wants to be left alone since he's doing research on the island but the both of them actually share a common goal. This seems to be backed by Hope herself who ever since she got access to Mandora's gems has been having visions in the form of dreams of Megalodon and the cloaked wanderer working together. Megalodon's plans for the island are pretty simple, once he fuels his leviathan ship he's gonna ravage the entire island possibly splitting it into two until it's destroyed and he can finally leave it and move on to his next target. If that does happen that would mean the zero point would yet again be exposed and vulnerable to any threats and this is just exactly what our cloaked character wants. If the wanderer finds it he could have the opportunity to set his plans in motion either by using it to visit other points in the timeline or even to destroy the island but that all really depends on who really lies behind his mask. And according to Megalodon that is beyond comprehension. This is a good time to remind us that Magneto's already in search for the zero points location thanks to the marvel rift beacons and this whole storyline is going to reach its climax next season with the arrival of doctor doom and the fantastic four so one way or another the zero point will be found and the wanderer's actions to it will be crucial despite of that there's already a faction that's relentlessly attempted to destroy the zero point whenever exposed and that's the last reality who something is very likely to be making a return after a find that changes everything during the fracture event the last reality temporarily succeeded destroying the island after the herald sacrificed herself and chromed everything on the island including herself in the process merging with the reality tree. 
After that, she was spotted on the Chapter 4 Season 1 map in the form of the Decayed Reality Tree, but she was quickly lost when the ground on the Chapter 4 map collapsed, revealing the jungle. The where she went afterwards is unknown, but eagle-eyed fans spotted a skin in a survey. With the addition of a new element in the storyline, it's likely we know how she's gonna return. In the survey, there's this remix version of the Herald in a fossilized form and what was initially thought to be amber on her. However, just recently, we saw something that really resembles these, and those are Pandora's orbs as well as the gems. Not only that, but there's also an explanation that ties Pandora's box with the nitro substance and potentially reveals how the herald will come to be again last season we saw the pandora's box vanish after the liquid inside its orb overcharged leading it to jump across the island and become the sandstorm that arrived it's seemingly confirmed that what we know as nitro fuel is the very essence of pandora's box and that's why all of pandora's gems have been scattered around the sandy wasteland perhaps this could lead to the herald rising in this fossil version after she'll be fused with the power of gems and nitro restoring her to her former glory and maybe even more powerful than before which takes us to the wander true identity. We already know the last reality is taken inspiration from Egyptian mythology using the pyramid as well as ancient cube glyphs and this is how the wanderer could be connected. We only have one look at the face and it's in the background of this loading screen where he or they are filtered in a black and white. Well, people frantically began searching through survey skins and they found this girl, one who had a jaw structure which is almost identical to the silhouetted face that we could see beneath the wanderer's cloak in the loading screen. In it, the skin poses with the cube reminiscent of the cube queen and the last reality. Her final evolution or style that she could evolve into resonates with this yellow and blue fiery survey skin meaning one thing. The Wanderer could potentially be a member of the last reality and by extension another alternate version of, you guessed it, the Cube Queen. This would make plenty of sense since it could explain how we'll return to Chapter 2's map and once we do return it'll be interesting to see another version of Chapter 2 Season 8 where we'll inevitably once again meet the last reality on our own terms. Just like the first season OG it's expected that we'll also see a new version of the previous Chapter 2 end event leading to the island flip thanks to the Cube Queen once again. Again, who this time could just be the Wanderer, though not enough is known yet for us to confirm his identity. More and more.